What is a nootropic? Is it something that just makes you like the movie Limitless where you can just do whatever? Or is it something that allows you to just kind of tap into a little bit more of your brain than you ordinarily would tap into on a day-to-day -day basis? What I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna give you three kinds of natural nootropics that you can use. But before I do that, I do have to give a solid breakdown of what a nootropic truly is and what a nootropic is not. Hey, you're watching the number one performance and nutrition channel on the internet. New videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Also hit that little bell button so you can turn on notifications whenever I go live. So getting it out in the open, a nootropic is not the same as a smart drug, okay? A nootropic is something that's supposed to help improve mental function, okay? They were originally put in place to help out in clinical settings. So in things like uh, patients with Alzheimer's or other neurodegenerative diseases. So even though they're natural and they're not synthetic, they still have clinical applications. And a lot of them got their efficacy proved through clinical applications. And we'll talk about that a little bit in this video. But I wanna make sure you're clear that it's not a smart drug, okay? We're not talking about things like modafinil or Adderall or Racetrams or anything like that or Neuropept or anything that is, could be misconstrued as a nootropic when it's truly just a synthetic pharmaceutical. We're not going down that road. However, I will say that the nootropic effect of some of these natural compounds can actually aggregate to have an even more powerful effect than a synthetic pharmaceutical. The first compound that I want to talk about is one that coincidentally enough has a name that sort of sounds like it'd be a pharmaceutical. This is known as Hooperzine. Okay, Hooperzine is unique in that it's extracted from moss. Now, I don't want you to go out to the forest and start eating gobs of moss. It's a good way to get sick. But Hooperzine is extracted from moss and what makes it exceptionally unique is that it has a very long half-life within the body. Okay, it absorbs very, very quick and then it has a super long duration in the body. In fact, a longer duration than most pharmaceutical smart drugs have in the first place. Now, what does Hooperzine actually do? Hooperzine acts on what is called choline sterase. In our brains, choline sterase inhibits the production or the release of acetylcholine. Okay? Now, I'm not gonna just ramble off a bunch of complex words. I'm gonna give you an understanding of what they are. Acetylcholine is very, very important to the brain. Okay, acetylcholine is, to give you a solid example, someone that has Alzheimer's is generally going to have like a 90% reduction in their acetylcholine levels. So acetylcholine is very, very powerful when it comes down to our nerves being able to communicate with one another, overall nerve signaling, and overall neuroplasticity, actually creating new neural pathways, changing how we think. So acetylcholine isn't some crazy compound. Acetylcholine is a naturally occurring byproduct and something that is required for overall cellular function and energy metabolism. Acetylcholine is occurring all over our body, okay? It's being produced in our muscles, it's being produced in our brain, you name it. So if we have higher levels of this naturally occurring thing that's already in our body, our body's own inherent ability to sort of get smarter, for lack of a better term, if we can inhibit choline sterase, which ultimately inhibits ACH, we can unleash the power of acetylcholine in our brains. So additionally, what acetylcholine has been shown to do in studies is to actually improve the encoding of memory into what is called the perirenal cortex. So the perirenal cortex is a part of the brain that sort of allows us to say yes or no to things, like what's gonna actually go into our memory, what's gonna be approved, and what's not gonna be approved. It's like the gatekeeper for what is actually allowed in our brain and what's not allowed in our brain. So if we can improve the encoding and be able to get past the gatekeeper into the perirenal cortex, we can actually make a state change for the better. So for example, if you are trying to make a change in your life, you're trying to be a better person, you're trying to acquire new habits, you're trying to just do something better with your life, you're gonna constantly be up against this roadblock, not only emotionally, but chemically, that acetylcholine, or lack thereof, is actually preventing you from ever being able to have new memories and new habits encoded into that perirenal cortex. So Hooperzine can actually make it so that that process can occur better. Now this next one's kind of funny because honestly, whenever I talk about it, people just kind of ignore me because it's just been talked about so much. Or it's just one of those things that just simply because it's an herb, it gets thrown under the bus. And I'm talking about ginkgo biloba. Yeah, ginkgo is so unbelievably underrated and I don't understand why people tend to just kind of just ignore it so much. It is very, very powerful. And we have to remember that when we're looking at overall brain function, Blood flow is a critical component. Okay? When we want to perform better in our brain, we need more blood to our brain. It's plain and simple. Okay? The problem is, is a lot of times we're so stressed out, we're in this vasoconstricted stage where we're not getting good blood flow to begin with. So not only are we barely getting blood flow to our extremities, we're not getting blood flow up to our brain either. And the less that we use different portions of our brain, the less that we're activating blood flow to that region of the brain. 20 to 25% of the blood with each beat of the heart should be going to the brain. 
Now, I don't know specifically what the average is for most people, but it probably is less than that. So what ginkgo is known for is for forcing blood flow into the brain a little bit better. Fun fact, one thing that I used to do is actually take ginkgo before bed because it would give me some more lucid style dreams. It actually has that ability. You're encouraging a good amount of blood flow without any kind of like true stimulatory effect, which is really what we want with the nootropic. We don't want to be jittery. We don't want to be all totally cracked out. We want to be able to have a nice, clean amount of energy. And ginkgo has the ability to do that by way of sending the right amount of blood to the right portion of the brain at the right time. This is perfect for those that are trying to master their cognitive skills. Now, remember that choline sterase that I talked about in that acetylcholine? Well, it just so happens that ginkgo actually has the ability to blunt choline sterase as well. So it has the same kind of effects as huperzine at a smaller scale, but you get a double whammy effect because you get the blood flow effect, plus you get the choline sterase inhibition and consequently the upregulation of acetylcholine causing that neuroplasticity change in your brain. This is what we definitely want. There was one study that was published in Neural Regeneration Research that did find that ginkgo is also contributing to overall stem cell growth in the brain as well. More stem cells means, again, more ability to make a state change, to actually make a change in your life. Okay, the next one that I want to talk about is one that I have talked about before, and that's lion's mane. Okay, lion's mane has been all over the internet lately. Now, some of this due in part to the fact that a lot of companies are coming out with lion's mane products, but the evidence is still there. See, what lion's mane does is it helps stimulate something known as nerve growth factor. Now, it sounds like just kind of a fancy word, but the reality is nerve growth factor is vital to nerve cells. It's easy for us to think of the nervous system and the brain as just like a bunch of electrical pathways, right? We always think of just an electrical system when we think of the nervous system. But we have nerve cells, and they act just like other cells in the body in a lot of ways. So if we're not taking care of those cells, then we're not able to have a properly functioning brain and nervous system. So stop thinking of the brain and the nervous system as just electricity, and start thinking of it as a true biological living thing, little cells that have to survive, and they eat this nerve growth factor. Without this nerve growth factor, they can't grow, and they can't become who they need to be to help you perform better. The other thing that lion's mane does is it triggers something known as remyelinization. Okay, so we have this thing called the myelin sheath and it encompasses pretty much all the nerves, right? We have this sheath that's like this kind of fatty tissue that covers the outside of a nerve. And this is what allows that transduction to occur. Okay, so let's say the sheath is broken a little bit, or maybe it's just worn out and it's dry and it's brittle. That means that a signal can't really be sent from your brain to another part of your body or within different compartments of your brain. So if we can encourage that remyelination, then we can allow our brains to develop these new pathways in more efficient ways. It's truly like the epitome of being able to change who you are. I don't know one person that is 100% happy with who they are and doesn't want to make a change in some aspect of their life that would correlate directly with some compartment of their brain. So this is the trick by utilizing lion's mane. Now, I guess the negative side of this is that if you don't use it, you lose it. Studies have shown that with lion's mane, if you were to stop using lion's mane, the progress sort of regresses a little bit. So it's like you use lion's mane, you improve, and then it starts to go away once you're not using it anymore. That's where you use rhodiola in adjunct to it. You see, rhodiola rosea is really powerful at preserving the results that you get from lion's mane. So lion's mane pushes you, advances you, allows you to feel better and do better, right? But then we have rhodiola that comes in and sort of like sets it in stone. So it's like it's got the fluid that's going into the mold, and the rhodiola rosea is the mold that locks it in place once it dries. That's what we want. So you have to put them together in tandem, otherwise you're not getting as much of an effect. And that's exactly where Four Sigmatic does come in, and that's why I am a huge fan of them, because they know what to combine. These guys know what they're doing, and that's why I stand behind them so much and I feature them on my channel all the time. So you can get Lion's Mane along with rhodiola and actually along with coffee and other things that are gonna allow you to get other nootropic effects by clicking on the link that's in the description. Now, again, you don't have to use Four Sigmatic, but at least they know what they're doing and they know how to combine lion's mane with the proper things that are gonna give you the effects that I just illustrated in this video. So also do them a solid simply because they're such an amazing sponsor of this channel. Honestly, a lot of these videos wouldn't even be possible if it wasn't for my awesome sponsors, so I do encourage you to check them out. Guys, if you want me to do more videos in the world of nootropics, if you want me to talk more about how you can sort of hack your mind a little bit more and to help you be a better athlete and be a better person, let me know in the comment section below because I definitely like talking these kind of topics and I know that it's helping a lot of people become better people. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you in the next video.